I don't know if we can ever really comprehend the nature of death and what that means or when we leave our body, for instance. But so many of us, we've, well, most of us on the planet, we've been programmed to believe that we die. And the right. truth is we don't. And I think that's the first lie we all bought into. And so coming to terms with that, what do you mean we don't die? Like I remember as a little girl, my, my uncle died of suicide. I think I was about eight or nine. And I remember seeing his body and coffin and just trying to comprehend we go somewhere, right? Of course, every little kid struggles with it, but I don't think anything changes as we age. We might right. think we, we comprehend it, but... Um, Anyway, I got off track a wee bit. I don't know um, my, why my uncle was coming in here because he rarely comes in to say hello, but he was my favorite uncle, and he was coming to talk to me over the last few nights. Too. I was starting to recall some of my moments with him. So it's interesting that he's coming in uh, as after you booked your session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because I'm going to tell you the story then a little bit that I know is that he was brokenhearted because his wife wanted a divorce and uh, he couldn't bear it because he was known as the happy-go-lucky. He was the favorite within the family. Everybody loved, adored him. You know, he was just a cool guy, all-around good guy. And so nobody could comprehend it. Is that more or less what's going on in your family situation? It is. Yeah, that's why the story was being illuminated for me and why he's coming in to talk about it. Yeah, so there you have it. Isn't it amazing how spirit works? It is. <laughs> so just breathe for a minute, Donna. So your son's coming in closer. Sometimes, you know, this is an interesting dynamic that occurred here because that's not ever happened to me where somebody comes in as a spokesperson. But I, I don't know if you've had any other communicators, spirit communicators, but your, your son looks like he's challenged with expressing himself, and I'm not sure if it's just an energetic aspect to where he is right now and what he's processing, um, but it's almost like his voice and his tone, everything is garbled. Like, he doesn't know how to, like, he knows how to speak, but the words aren't coming out like he wants to. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if expressing himself was always the issue, but it's almost like he's talking underwater, where, you know, you can hear the tone, but you can, I can't make out the words. So I'm just going to give him a minute to come in a little closer, and I'm going to ground him. Actually, what I'm going to offer him is I'm going to extend some healing to him, because it looks like he was a very linear person, or in terms of analyzing, it looks like very structured and organized and um, rigid in some ways, and high expectations. Does that resonate with you? Yes. And you know, yesterday when you said that someone was trying to come in and you asked if my son had allergies and you said your left nostril was you know, what we talked about yesterday. Anyway, mm -hmm. after we got off the phone, I thought about it, and I thought he had a deviated septum, and it was his left nostril. Okay, so that was him coming through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you for that. That's a free, I appreciate that. So I'm just giving you evidence here. We can talk about it more as you, you know, as we explore, but I just want you to give, you know, to have absolute confidence that this is him coming through, and wanting to express, you know, what, what I'm speaking um, to you, um, he, he does need some healing. He, he had, was there something going on with his stomach? Because I'm seeing this, this knot in his stomach and just like almost nauseous, like yeah. wanting to vomit and, and, and pain in the stomach. 
up. Had a lot of a lot of pain in his stomach, just like, uh, and he took times all the time. Okay. He's saying, "Mom, you're the one person I never intended to hurt." Well, it's not like he didn't he didn't never intended to hurt anybody, but you're the one person that he most didn't want to hurt. He's he's saying that his thinking was confused. It's spiraling around. Was he on meds? He was. Because there's something about the chemistry and the medicine and confusion. So I just see him going around and around and around and and just trying to hold on to thought. They 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 escaped him. And he was trying to make sense of them and keep them in a linear organized fashion, does that resonate with you? Yes. So oftentimes they explain or show their last physical where they're at, and I feel like he's still a little bit stuck there, and that can happen, and, you know, like, it's almost like he doesn't know he's deceased. Was this yeah. a drug issue, a drug overdose? Well, he was, uh, he had a lot of anxiety um, the last a little bit of his life, and um, he had, was taking clonopin, and he took too much clonopin, and then he drank alcohol on the top of it. Mm-hmm. So part of it was accidental, but it was it it was sort of a two twofold thing. Part of it he wanted to be out of his misery, but another part was accidental. Does that resonate? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't a, a thousand percent intentional in other words right. there was effects of the meds but he wasn't able to get on top of it and he also wanted to be out of his misery yeah. so first of all i'm going to give him a healing to help him open up the dialogue and communication with you at a more clear level it looks like even the memory you have of him looks like the last 15 years were pretty dark, dim, struggle, uh, heavy, not so dynamic and creative. I was, we were super close, but his dad died 15 years ago. Oh, that was the trigger point. Okay. But he and I had a very close relationship. Right. Yeah, I don't mean, I mean his, his, state of mind for the last 15 years is what you're showing me or he's showing me is that was the heavy the break or the the cloud that was just sort of took away that his creative spirit yes yes he he, he never recovered from his dad's death it didn't seem like right so in in a way it's almost like he's stuck in an elevator you know, it's not a bad place. It's just the elevator stuck between the floors. Right. And so I'm just going to um, start collecting his energy from the earth plane and, and from his earth body. Like I said, he doesn't even, there's a big part of his spirit that doesn't know he's out of his body yet. He's still clinging to the earth plane in, in many ways. Was he a basketball fan? Because I just see him shooting hoops. He was. Yeah, he's shooting hoop. So that's what he's. That's where he wants to go. Shoot some hoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> mm hmm. And I yawn a lot, Don, and not because you're boring. I'm just clearing the energy, and it just triggers things within me. So was he? Did he? Did it, was he going through a breakup? Because I'm flashing on my uncle telling me the story about how um, humiliated he was, or you know, was your son? Yes. So he was going through a breakup. Is that part of what was going on? It was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow, that blows my mind. 
all the stories are so similar. Yeah. You know, that's a good example of when spirit starts to come around. Like, he was literally showing me the story, and I was like, oh, I remember that day at the zoo, my uncle and his wife, I think she, they were engaged at the time, and yeah, I must have been more than eight, seven or eight. So I don't have yeah. lots of memories, you know, of it. But it was right. a big deal to go with my sister and my uncle for the day, and and uh, what a sweetheart he was. Nobody else ever took me to the zoo or anything like that. So that whole story just started coming out in my head last night. <laughs> and I'm like, and so the Amazing. moral of the story here is how spirit just brings back these memories. In our mind, we think, oh, it's a memory, but they're coming around to trigger them. Yeah. And I also That's think, amazing. yeah, that your son was trying to show me the picture. You know, he was definitely instrumental in this, wanting me to see it without you telling me, you know, what was going on and for you to get validation that it's him. So as I'm working the energy, as I'm talking here, you know, the elevator staff looks very rigid, you know, and very stiff. And it doesn't look like, I don't know that he trusted spirituality or, or this idea of, of heaven. It just seems like he's got a lot of questions around that or doubt. And he seemed to be sort of a skeptic. Does that resonate? Absolutely. He was an atheist. Okay. So that's why I see him stuck in this elevator shaft and yeah so I'm going to start working this energy yeah like it's stuck between floors and I guess his idea of heaven is shooting <laughs> basketball hoops <laughs> well i guess we all have different ideas huh? well you know here's the thing years ago i remember connecting with this man an elderly gentleman and all i could see him doing is he, he was in his workshop and he was just cleaning this wood and i told his daughter that and she just said that was the love of his life that would be his heaven. Oh, wow. And you know what? It looked like, you, you know those little gifs or gifs, sort of an animated yeah. image? Well, th yeah. that was kind of what, it was such a short loop. And it was on a rinse and repeat type of replay. And I thought to myself, well, that is why it's so important for us to develop our consciousness. And an awareness and a connection to the divine, because if we don't, we could be stuck in this elevator shaft where God knows, you know, until hell freezes over. Yeah. And when we leave our physical body, the spirit, it, first of all, the consciousness and for us to grow and heal and, and learn the lessons that our spirit, our soul wants to learn, it takes a very, very long time if not eons, when we don't have a physical body. That's why it's such a gift to have a human body, be in human form. Because yes, it's painful. Yes, it's, a, it's, just, it's just the hardest thing ever. We grump and moan and, you know, tickle, you know, complain as we're learning these lessons and the, the journey that we call life. But that is the gift. Is because in a short amount of time, let's give ourselves 80 years, you know, 100 years nowadays, um, we get to learn these lessons as a spirit and, and develop our soul that we then take with us to the next phase, to the next process or development. Yeah. That's interesting. He Was your son? Move on. 
Well, yeah, I'm working on the energy. He's he's quite resistant at this moment, um, but it's not his will, you know. I mean, well, it is his will, but I'm also bringing in some pretty hard hitter angels and and the crew. I'm bringing in my team, you know, here. And uh, was he like and I see analyzing and I see numbers and I see, it's almost like it's accounting or math and everything just has to seem to add up. Him. He was in a. He had an accounting degree. Yes, and his number. Okay. He was fabulous with numbers. Love math. So, do you believe this is him here? I do. Yes. Okay. Great. He's happy now. He's smiling. <laughs> well, his heart is starting to melt, or this energy field around him. Your connection is so strong. I do see that. That heart connection is literally like melting that elevator shaft around him. And he's really excited to be connected with you right now and having this union. And he's just, it's, it's almost like tears of joy. He's just so grateful to know that you know it's him and that he, you know, he's just so sorry he hurt you. He, he just never wanted to bring this pain on you that wasn't his it wasn't at all a, a plan i do know that he's saying he has a crossword puzzle for you okay We we would do some, like not crossword puzzles together. Sometimes we would do just regular puzzles, you know. Okay, but, so he's you know. showing me this puzzle. Okay, okay. He's very excited to know that he's that you know he's right here. Yeah. Did you go look at some ducks, or were you walking near some ducks, or did you guys have an experience with ducks together? My, uh, we have a boat, and there's ducks and things out there. Yeah. Well, he's talking about when you go down to the ducks that he's with you. Okay. And he's talking about a moment that you went down there. Were you alone? Because he's talking to me and saying that, you know, he was he was with you there. He's talking about being there with you. Yeah, I went to the water not long ago. Yeah, I did to the river mm -hmm. by myself. Yeah. So again, this is valid. That's the validation that he's giving you right now. That that this is him again. More validation. You know, sometimes it's like. Well, we've got 50, 50, 50 proof now <laughs> that this is him. <laughs> so, Donna, just go ahead and breathe, okay? Just let your shoulders relax. Your son is just holding you. He wants you to know he hasn't gone anywhere. His body's not here, but he's very much with you. He's saying that he recognizes the next step he has to take without you. But he's still going to be with you. That makes sense. He said that you can't take this journey with him. It's almost like a path is revealing itself now and it's illuminated and it's, oh my gosh, the beautiful angels are coming in and just showing him the light and he's walking along the path. So 
So he's out of the elevator for sure, huh? Uh Uh-huh. It's almost like the elevator just dissolved. And the most important thing was he just wanted you to know he was connecting to your heart and that you're always connected. He never had a chance to tell you how much he loved you. I think you guys spoke about it a lot, but he meant, like, it's like your heart was in his and his was in yours. It was more than words can ever express, as he's saying. Yeah, it was. For both of us, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it's difficult to quite explain this, and our linear mind tries to, I guess, segment it or comprehend it, but it's like he's got some work to do. He's taking this path, and he's getting closer into the light where he's almost not, I I don't see his form, you know, he's merging. But it's not like he can't come back or say hello or that he's not here. It's like he's, he's, he's processing. There's much for him to process now that he's been released from that suspended animation. Yeah. I, I, I have just I've known this. I've just known this. And I didn't know how to release him. I mean, I tried. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know how. I told him that I released him and I wanted him to go and do what he needed to do and be where he needed to be. I just didn't know how. But also, he didn't know, he wanted you to know that he would never leave you. I've heard, uh, he's told me that a lot. Yeah, and I'll put out, you know, uh, I think, I think I was nervous, you know, if he moves on because, I mean, my first husband used to talk to me, and then when I got close to my second husband, um, he faded away, and he, he doesn't really come to me anymore, mm-hmm. and um, I, I wondered if, if the same thing was going to happen with my son uh, when he did whatever he was doing, you know, so it's good to know that he'll always be with me. And your husband is, your first husband's still around, it's just that he's It's almost like he's in the bleachers just allowing you to have your experience. And it's not like an earthly thing where we think, oh, he doesn't care or he's not buttoned in. or No, he's just, it's like he's there. There's a presence, but he's just, you know, honoring your spiritual path and your lessons as a soul that you're learning in this experience about yourself. You know, the biggest thing that I see that your son was resisting is any idea of God. And I think 15 years ago was when he slammed the lid on God. Yep. So the pain and all of that, you know, all those life lessons and, and experiences are what, you know, he'll have an opportunity to review and um, understand that you know that journey, and God knows I'm not. I have no. I can't say what goes on completely for everybody. Um, you know, I just had a glimpse into the other side myself. But you know, everybody has a unique experience and and soul's journey. So where he goes to process or goes to class or where, you know, what dimension he'll be at in terms of the soul. Consider this, that we're multidimensional beings. So we can be in multiple places at once. It's just that our human self has a hard time comprehending that. What are you saying if he goes to profit? Process. Process, oh. It's a process. That's the best way. A journey of the soul, you know, interdimensionally. I don't know what, you know, 
we, we, we use this fanciful word called heaven, but what the heck is that? You know? Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's multifaceted. It's so interdimensional and vast that I think, you know, I'd be a fool if I tried to describe it. Have you been having headaches? Yes. Okay, so I see that on your head. So that's an indication that energy's stuck, right? And it might be, you know, your son DJ trying to get a hold of you, tapping you on the head, trying to get, you know, get through. So I'm just going to, again, I'm just releasing this energy. It's just, I'm just going to call it foreign energy, okay? I'm not going to associate it with any one person because, you know, people that you care about have been concerned about you, you know, checking in on you or you wishing they would all just leave you alone, you know, all of it. Even somebody from afar just thinking about you, wonder how she's doing, wonder how she's making out. God, I want to talk to her, but I'm a, I don't know what to say. Or, geez, you know. Um, so all of those dialogues and thoughts and all of it, this is a big mesh, mash up. Oh, wow, that was a good one, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> so we so we really feel each other's energy like even far away if there's thoughts about us. Oh yeah, you see, energy moves with a thought. A thought is energy. It's a thing. Just like stop. Just imagine all the thoughts and all those grudges and resentments and you know moments that we door we hold on to we think oh I let go of that oh and then look I remembered my uncle and that memory of being a kid going to the zoo that was stored in my energy field right just imagine every little thing we've experienced it's a massive massive archive we think oh that's so long ago oh it's ancient memory now Oh, no, it's still creating for you. It's in the, behind the scenes. It's like having a Word document open, even though you're on Excel or working in some other software, that Word document's still silently running in the background. Well, so the, the big thing, and a lot of the work I do, is just releasing energy that's not you. And what that does is it brings us online. It's like our soul going, yoo-hoo, I'm alive. And, and, and I get to create and, oh boy, what do I want to do? Gee, I always wanted to learn piano. Oh, gee, I wanted to, you know, run a marathon. Oh, gee, I wanted to, you know, travel to Costa Rica. I don't know, whatever it is. You know, I always wanted to write a book or I always wanted to, you know, sing in a choir or whatever it is that our spirit wants to express, how we want to express ourselves, the fullness, fullest capacity. That's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to discover. That's what we're here to express. 